State University Game 2 of this weekend series. Paris here is here with Dan Frigid. Dan, looking for another exciting game as we got last night. 2-2 was your final uh, after they played the 3-on-3 three -three overtime, which was exciting, but did not, in fact, decide a winner. Yeah, they played pretty tight defensively last night, so we'll see if it opens up offensively tonight. Engineers get the puck in deep right off the bat. There's a shot on goal. From a distance and held by Zach Rose is back in there for the Falcons tonight. Rose, a junior uh, from Paradise, Nova, uh, Newfoundland, excuse me. Just one tie on the year, of course, happened last night. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, he saw 10 games last year right. after losing their number one goaltender to Boston College as a transfer. Face off here in the Bowling Green zone. And sent back the other way. Glove down. And moved out by RPI. And now gathered up by Bowling Green. Chipped into the RPI zone. Got from a tight angle, hits the base of the net. Now another shot is blocked. by the engineers. Hallbauer shoots it deep and it's going to be no icing. This is turned back around. Deep into RPI territory it goes. Picked up by Johnson and now Herman. Herman's going to shoot it in. Rung around behind the goal. Here's Lepinen. Back towards the blue line where it's kept in by Laurie Surti. Shot to flex over behind the goal. Picked up there by Lori Herman Trotsky on trying to cycle it. And kept in on the carry by RPI, now forced out to center ice. Ethan Sardina takes a big hit there from Johnson. And Coley Green's going to change behind the play, they dump it in. Here's Surti now. In deep. This will ring around and moved out by Conquest on the carry. Adam Conquest into RPI territory. Scooped along by the engineer. Nick Bowman now for RPI. Bowman to a knee is knocked down. And now back from the Falcons. Wrist shot coming. Glove save. Marshall is held on to there. We get a shot to 13 29 to go. Good shot by O'Hara using the defenseman as a screen. Puts it right on goal. Easy save for Marshall to make, seeing it all the way. And there's one shot apiece here early in the first period. Face off win for the Celtics. Quick shot blocked there. Another one blocked down. A shot hit his own man. Oh, come up high. That's going to sting. And he wants to uh, whistle here. He got hit in the head. That's not good. Cole Norris immediately calls to the referee. I think he got hit right under, right under the helmet line there. Yeah, I think he got it in the ear, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, it could be. And so he, it was a smart play and, and good officiating to, to recognize that. And really, heads up play by Norris himself to call for help. Oxford, Michigan native is down. And I shouldn't be doing this. I think he might have caught it in the ear, which yeah, is always right. real painful. Cartilage in there is very, very sensitive. These two teams tied yesterday with a stoppage here on the interim. We can talk about yesterday's game, Dan. And, uh, kind of a back and forth game. Bowling Green scored in the, in the first, and there wasn't a goal again until the third period. We had a little barrage of tallies there, and then RPI took a brief 2 1 lead. And then Bowling Green tied it up, and it was a really probably the, the correct result for how yesterday went, you think? Yeah, I see a little different uh, play tonight. Last night, I, th I thought there was 
you know, the puck carrier tried to beat the defense one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Next thing you know, there was a turnover. They'd go the other way to be a turnover. There were a lot of turnovers early in the game last night. And it looks like Norris seems to be okay. Here might be ringing a little bit. Good thing, I think it might have hit him flat. Yeah. That way, you know, that would explain why he didn't get uh, cut at all, but. His ears probably ringing. So. Oh yeah, no question. Well, at least he was able to get off on his own. That's good to see. His injury last night was, was uh, Doherty. Doherty got, yeah, he had blocked his shot. And you see him in the cast today, so not good there for Bowling Green. First game of the season, tough, tough sledding there. Anyway, so a bunch of changes. Reasonable amount of changes, I guess, each way. Is it three each way we came up with? Yep, three each way. Engineers have such a big roster, a deep roster, as Coach Smith has pointed out, that we're going to see different guys, just maybe just to get some fresh legs out there. Guys that deserve a chance to play. And then, that's what we're seeing tonight, is someone who did play last night, is Justin Adamo, his big 6'6 frame, going after the puck there. Taken over by Taylor Schneider, senior from Lakeville, Minnesota. He'll throw it down the middle. Picked away by Mason Clee, shoots it off the wall, but dumped right back in, well, not dumped back in. Schneider gets it back, lifts it over for Sam Craig, assistant captain, fifth year senior. Tipped into the RPI zone. This is Chelber. He'll go D to D with it, playing it off the wall is Clee. Up ahead, looking for one of the newcomers for RPI in Jake Gagno. Sophomore from Point Blair, Quebec. Lost the puck there. Now Lloyd the other way. Takes a shot right on. Saved by Marshall. He'll hold on. And a good job not to allow a rebound. Uh, the senior netminder there, Marshall, out of Victoria, British Columbia. Good start to this season last night. Saw a lot of pucks. Uh, good amount of pucks. He was able to you know, limit, the, limit the big turn and limit the big rebounds uh, yesterday. Yeah, defense did a real good job of clearing the rebounds. Looked like Marshall just stayed square to that shot, absorbed it, and uh, looks like he's feeling good in the first couple of shots that he's handled. Draw here. The RPI end, won cleanly by the engineers. That's something that RPI did a really good job of the last few years under Dave Smith is winning face-offs. That was Herman winning the draw. This is going to be a wave off the ice. Maybe he hit somebody on the way down. This is that line that was so effective yesterday, Lappinen. Uh, along with the uh, Herman and Laka, this one was another big hit. He was talking about post game how he likes to throw the body around and picks up where he left off. Yeah, he likes to play a physical game, so I'm sure that the Bowling Green forwards are aware when he's out on the ice, or they should be. Back into the zone they come. There's Craig's trying to shoot it in, block, and turn back the other way. They get to chase Denal with that shot. Now a handle for Laka walking in a fast save made by Rose. Puck stays on the ice, however. It's pumped up into the air into the corner. And Bowling Green looking to break out now. Garrett Daly, junior from Lakeville, Minnesota as well. A couple of Lakeville kids on this Bowling Green squad. Johnson tries to go behind the net, but he gave it away. Jam trying front foot wide. Oh, what an opportunity there. Jake Johnson with a giveaway behind the cage. I think it was Scardina who missed the net from point blank range. And now back comes Dubinsky and the engineers. Ahead for Bowman. Bowman, cross ice feed. One timer coming and a save by Rose. He'll hold on. Is snapping his stick in half was Lowry Cerny. Hey fans, don't forget, this yes, is the official online Finland score. With the try there. He had a good game last night on defense for RPI. Cerny. Half his stick might have gone farther than the puck there. Snap that thing in half. It kind of just went trickling in on Rose and he scooped it up on the, on the bounce. Well, that didn't happen very much back in the day when the strong players used to use wooden sticks. Yeah. You want, you want to go back to that or just a... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can miss him. Here's a stretch pass and a breakaway. Scardina, and he scores! What a pass. And Ethan Scardina picks up his first win of the season, second of his career. It's one nothing Bowling Green. Well, I think the RPI players got caught watching the puck. And Scardina came off. I don't know if he came off the bench or not, but he made a nice cut in the neutral zone and got in behind the defenders and one-on-one -on, -one on Marshall and put it high on Marshall. You know, for he was a goal. face-off man on the defensive draw, so he must have broken free. Yep.
That would be a switch off because usually it's the center that has to take that guy. But once he releases, it becomes the defenseman's responsibility. Right. One nothing, Bowling Green. Bowling Green goal was scored by number 17, Ethan Scarding. It was assisted by number 26, Gabriel Chiquan. And number 24, Eric Parker. Time of the goal, 5 minutes, 36 seconds. Goal by 17, Scarding. From 26, Chiquan. Barber doesn't do it, but he back to the point. Jumped right back in. Baxter will shoot it to the near side, tipped out to center. It will be chased down here by Alex Barber, the senior from Dublin, Ohio. Tipped in deep as to avoid the icing. Bowling Green will change all five. Henri Stifles. Stifles had it for a moment. It was poked off his stick in deep on goal, covered by Rose. And if Henri on the prowl, he'll hold on. Scheifels did not play yesterday. He's a sophomore from Newbury Park, California, former Victoria Grizzly. One of the three changes. We talked about Daniel. He was the other. And then the defenseman, Dylan Davies, he's your seventh D man on the Argonne. Scheifels in there at center. 6'1, 195. Lefty shot. Bowling Green wins the draw. Gagno, a shot from the wall, goes high and wide. Kept in at the point by Johnson. Right back down low. That's Shane Seller. Thrown out in front off the stick of the netminder. Gagno battling for it, but it will be cleared to the line, but not out. Kept in by uh, Cerny. Now Schreifel's a shot from a tight angle, saved by Rose. Lob back out to center. Johnson pounces on it. Taps it along, restart for Lloyd and the Falcons. Lloyd off a skate, sent right back to the neutral zone. Right back in by Coyle. Center eyes now, Otto Gile Leffen in stick handling. He'll backtrack a bit here and create some room. Johnson across, Surdy off a skate. Leffen, or Laka trying to find it, Leffen and does. Fires a shot, the glove save. As coming out of his net, almost to the edge of the crease there, was Zach Rose. Nice play by Lapidan, just getting the shot on goal. He had two of his line mates going to the net. Looking to pick up a rebound, but Rose handed up hanging on to it with a glove hand. Another down one nothing again, as they were last night, but a better, you know, six attempts, five on goal already for RPI in this period. We're not uh, halfway through it. Getting more pucks through the net already than in yesterday's game. Here's an outlet pass, it's Gardena again. Rick shot, pad save, rebound, sitting there. And it was just out of the reach of Marshall. He got some help from Simon Shelberg, the New York Rangers draft choice. That long reach of Shelberg helps him out when he's protecting the net front there. Dump back in. Played by Cooley. Nice job to shield the puck by Mason. And he gets it as far as center. Now Shelberg lifts it neatly off the boards as to avoid the icing, forcing the Falcons back to play. Shaquan, the the uh, Norwich transfer from Division Three was very impressive yesterday as a uh, fanning on that one. Uh, uh, Fighting. Uh, chance in front. Falcons back into the attacking zone. Lawson at the blue line. Pinballs around to Schneider. Still loose in the neutral zone. Jumping on it is Dubinsky. He gets slashed. Penalty coming up. That stick came down hard on Dominski's stick. He didn't break it, but our guy's going to go on a power play. That yeah, was a little heavy on the wood yeah. there. There could be some stick, stick battling, right? Some you want to yeah. press your stick down yeah. and pull their stick or something with yours, but you can't come down like that violently. Exactly. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to come down on the hands. If he comes down on the stick, right. they'll call it every time. Sam Craig's in the box. Elmer's Illinois native. Sam Craig's. First power play chance for RPI today. There is hope for two or yesterday. Time of the penalty is 44 seconds. 25. Jover and Rich shot coming. That was blocked by Bobby. On a slash. It's an E. Stewart Jones. Hacker. It's Nathan Burke. Short hand. It will be Marshall out of his net to play. Jover. To her Linden. Two Lindens, if you will, the captains for RPI this 
here. Good outlet pass to the near side. Rink wide uh, for Seller. Bouncing in the slot. Shot comes Walsh in the skate. In the corner it goes. Back to the line. Shelburne. Walsh at the point. He's a forward. Back to Shelburne. Slap shot coming. And I think it was stopped. Rebound. They I'm sure he's glad he got that one out of the way. Couldn't come at a better time on the power play. Good shot on Cole. And as we saw, the rebound came out. He was able to stuff it far side just under the blocker of Rose. It's nice to get that one under your belt, you know. 17th career goal for Seller. Power play tally. Makes it 1-1. Well, we're already at a point that we didn't get to until the third <laughs> period last night. Good point. Walk out to center ice. Lucky throws a hip check and the fans applaud. RPI goal was scored by number 26, uh, Shane Seller. He was assisted by number two, Simon Jelber. Johnson in the field of the net. He's off the end. And by number 13, T.J. Wall. From two, Jelberg, and They'll 13, Walsh, and 937. Tipped in deep by Seller. And RPL put the forecheck out there. Shrikles digging. Daly's in there, along with Max Coyle for Bowling Green. And Quite a stalemate here with nine minutes to go in the first. Finally dug out. The refs don't like to blow the whistle in those cases anymore. No, they want to keep the puck moving as opposed to blowing the whistle for, for a puck first. Reason, yeah. Centering pass and Seller doing the job of a center in the middle of the ice there. Well, not his position, he was covering the Shrikles. We got a whistle, I think, an offside. 8.30 to go first period. Shane Seller has even things here after Ethan Scartini gave Bowling Green a one nothing lead. Well, I was talking, I was talking to a prominent Bowling Green hockey alumni today. Oh, yeah? And uh, he was real disappointed in us because remember last night we said that the colors for Bowling Green were orange and brown? Yeah. Well, they're actually... Burnt orange and seal brown. Okay, well, we can blame Wikipedia for that. <laughs> Usually, Wikipedia is very good at this one specific thing, which is telling me school colors. So, right. Yeah, I, I do. I apologize. I wasn't thorough enough. No, no. That hey, I said the same thing. So, so I asked him. I said, well, I could hardly imagine what the team chant would be. You know, you want to hear it? Burnt, 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 burnt. Burnt, burnt orange. Yeah, and he said that usually didn't happen until the wee hours of the morning. Okay. <laughs> RPI scoring on the power play. This is their first power play goal of the year. But they only had two chances. Shane Seller, oh, mind you, he, he had two goals and an assist in the exhibition game against Union. So he'd already scored a goal in RPI colors and just didn't count. Right. You know, that's interesting that they played the exhibition game against Union. I think they should do that more often. Well, it was due to COVID, and none of the Canadian colleges could, could come down. So right. The, the NCAA made a, excuse me, not allowed. The NCAA made an allowance there for teams. Bowling Green played Michigan in their exhibition game. I don't think the, pretty good. Yeah, I don't think the exhibition counts against the strength of schedule, does it? No, of course not. Okay, no. yeah. No, they, they played Michigan, lost 7-1, to one, but it, it, you probably play all your goalies. You, you know, it's... Our guy had two different lineups for each half of the game. It was yeah. not really a, something you worry too much about the result. Uh, we're back to action here. Huh. 
And talking to the assistant coach, Savo, over with Bowling Green. Former Princeton. Yeah. He said that uh, Michigan's one of the best teams he's seen. I'm not surprised by that. They <laughs> a dozen many killers, I'm sure. Angel Yeah, picks, right? exactly. Top, top rounds, too. And the top pick in the NHL draft decides to come back to college. You probably have something good going on there. Lloyd, a shot intercepted by Hallbauer. He'll skate it out like he loves to do. Hallbauer across. Here's Manchin back in front. Hallbauer is taken down. Back to the blue line. Shot coming. It was tipped in front by... I think that was uh, Bowman. Sent out to center ice. Broken up there momentarily. That was Baxter. Chip back in. Mark guy wants to complete a change. They will. Shots are 6-4 engineers. And as they walk right in, there's a man open on the back door. That was Norris. Good to see him back out there. The pass was not been in. Could not sneak that pass through. Yeah, that was Burke. One move too many. Burke had the goal last night, the opening goal of the game. And now we got a whistle here, and a puck played with a high stick. We'll send the face off, I believe, just out of the zone. Shots attempted 10 to 6 RPI. And the draw will come outside RPI territory. You got Austin Swankler, who is the preseason rookie of the year. They don't have that in ECC hockey. Uh, I think it's an odd award, right? You haven't done anything. It's yeah. just a matter of like what your reputation is, I guess, coming in. Exactly. Obviously, it's, what it, it's basically all it is. He's the, he's the guy we talked about playing for the Erie Otters in the OHL. Yep. So well, I can see why. Yes. Getting an assist yesterday. Yeah, he's a good player, but you're right. He's going with the reputation because he really hasn't played any college yeah, hockey games. Preseason anything, I guess, is kind of a... I'm not a huge pole guy either, but it's, it obviously it's some, something for people to talk about. The engineers, I mean, you feel slighted if you're picked in the bottom half of the league. You feel like you have to live up to it if you're in the top half, right? But it never really seems to work out that way. No, I think it's just added added media, added hype, something to talk about. Sure. Based off of the RPI end now. Lori Herman to take that one. RPI gets Ethan Scardina. Engineers win it, 30. Realize how much time he had. He just throws it high off the glass. Laka went down at the Bowling Green blue line, and RPI's in on the forecheck pressure again, but Bowling Green's going to shoot this one in. Lapin in at the half wall. Hands it off for Herman. Rory Herman takes a look, throws it to the far side. Johnson jumping up, and now the engineers have to defend with Lapin back there. Shot zinged wide, and a good tie up there on the backside of the play as Herman wrapped his man up looking for that rebound off the end board. That was a real good play by Herman, just lifting the stick. Now Herman will carry. RPI scored a goal in a similar situation here last night. Herman and, and Lepinen combined. Now Laka, he had the first goal of the game for RPI. A wicked shot from the top of the circle. This is deflected on goal. Maybe two deflections, a little pinball action in, on the net minor rose. He's able to cover it up and see it all the way. Yeah. Ricochet rabbit action there. Going back to those poles in preseason, you know, when you're picked or chosen at the bottom of the league, most coaches use that as motivation. And uh, the real test is when you're picked at the top, it's kind of like a curse when you're picked number one. But for a team to go through the whole season, pick number one, and then to finish number one, yeah, that's impressive. Absolutely. Puck back out to center ice. Hallbauer is going to pick it up and shoot it back in. Face off. Go ahead. I was going to say the referee had to do a little dance there. <laughs> He's got nothing to hold on to because yeah. of the glass. Now Mashey tried to dangle his way in. It was poked off his stick by Craigs. Lobbed high in the air. It'll finally come down in the RPI zone. Hallbauer deals with it very well. Looking ahead for Bowman. You're looking up, trying not to get hit by a guy coming from the side, right? Exactly. <laughs> Behind the net, Mashey. Point, shot. Deflected, and it goes just wide. That was Baxter who lined up the slapper with traffic in front of the net. Arkad nearly capitalized. Well, they nearly knocked that out of the air. This is 
shot in wide of the cage. Picked up Dubinsky. Center ice Bowman. Bowling Green with it. Under five to play in the first. Tipped in deep. Race with a puck. And a pass save and a tight angle shot. Now a drop pass here. The wrist shot. Blockered over the net by Marshall. Bowling Green peppering the RPI cage right now. Burke, point, shot, deflected wide. Might have caught the toe again of Marshall, but it just missed. Now back comes Gagno. Jumped in. Back out to center it goes. Spinning with it. Is Burke, and we get a whistle here and a penalty coming up. It's going to be holding. Yeah, I was going to say he kind of had him wrapped up pretty good. He took the hand off the stick and brought it around underneath his arm and grabbed the body. So well, the first time Dylan Davies goes into the score sheet as a collegiate player, it's not how you want as a penalty. You're still on the score sheet. <laughs> They don't ask how. <laughs> well, this point, Traverse City, Michigan native, Dylan Davies to the box for holding. First penalty of the night. Here he two minutes for holding. Time of that penalty, 16 minutes, three seconds. Engineers win the draw. They've done a good job of passing. He's on a hold. 16 no Draw Faceoffs are uh, 10 to 6 RPI. Jack lapping in, puck was in the zone anyway. Trying to clear and clearing is back to grad student, grad transfer from UMass Lowell, uh, Oakville, Ontario. 117 career college hockey games, 116 of those with the river on. He's the, the veteran transfer on D that the engineers were looking for, I'm sure, to kind of shore things up. We have some veterans and some, some younger players, but really the Blue Lines played a lot of hockey, whether here or elsewhere. I think that's one of the reasons why they gave him, uh, he's wearing the A. Right. He and Seller both grad transfers playing just their second game for RPI, but have played, well, in Seller's case, almost 100 games. He'll get there early on in the year. Here's Swankler as they set up the power play. Better cross. Snapshot are looking for one, but a fan on right there. That was Burke in a similar spot to where he scored uh, down low. He likes to get those. It was a rebound, I guess, the first time around, but that time was a, looking for the one timer. Well, that's real tough to defend against. You got the guy right in the slot. It's a tic tac toe play. You move it from low to high, back to uh, low again, and then you're looking for the one timer. The, the, the defense can't react quick enough for coverage. 30 is able to clear, 26 to go on the power play. Chiquan from St. Dominique, Quebec. A couple assists in yesterday's game. He was impressive. You know, top level Division Three hockey is very good hockey. I'm sure, you're, I'm sure you know that. Oh, no question. Norwich is always the power. Now 30, as the engineers are out of the box, 30 gave it away. He's looking for two or Linden. They all Division Three. RPI knows a lot about Division Three. Most of their sports play Division Three. You, you have to train. You have to work hard. You have to be in top shape. It's not. Oh, nice catch there. First save of the collegiate career for Jack Watson, the freshman of Toronto. Hey, man, it doesn't count. It was a nice club. It was a nice club save. That was a nice club save. That's why he's wearing. He's, he's ready to go. He's <laughs> tall. As well as ESPN Plus. Goalies, backup goalies have door duty, so that's what for more that's what information. Does. Would be ideal if his doing, yeah. would be ideal if his name was Carlton. <laughs> one thirty-two to go in the first. One-one RPI Bowling Green. Face off here, one by the engineers. Chipped up the boards and out to center. Now Klee trying to walk his way into the defenseman. Gets it back again. Klee down low, cycling there. 
trying to find it is Seller, or Linden rather. And it'll be picked up by the Falcons. They skate it out. The goal scorer, Scardina, all the way in and took a shot. This is the final minute of play in the last game of play. Shelberg ahead. Lloyd gets dumped. Picked up by Shelberg, trying to center for Linden. It hits a skate, comes in on goal, and it'll be covered up by Rose. 48.9 to play in the period. Better, better first period tonight than last night, on all, all things considered, I think. You know, Linden, Tour Linden talked about it post game, but I think both teams are kind of trying to feel each other out a little bit that first period. I guess. This, this feels like more of a continuation of the third than it does a, a, new, a new first period. Yeah, and listen to the post game remarks from Coach Smith. This is what he was looking for. He, he, his analogy of both teams in the first two periods was playing nice in the sandbox. <laughs> Puck behind the goal. Knocked down there. Bowman. Now Bowman across to Baxter had to reach for it. 27 to go in the period. Aren't getting a nice job of cycling here. Mashy. Big body knows how to do that. Stick handling Ryan Mashy. Penalty coming up. Penalty on the coming. They get a touch there with 12.8 seconds left. It's our goal from the power play for the second time. It's going to be a hold. That's what you get when you cycle the puck. The other team gets tired and they can turn into penalty. Well, that's what you want to do with a cycle. The strategy is to wear down the opposition's defense. And in some cases, if you cycle long enough and wear them down, they can't get a change. Sometimes you get a line change out there and you get fresh legs out on the ice and the defense. It's real tough playing defense. Here's Walt. That's off a skate. And four seconds. Maybe one shot here. So we don't know how much time's left. Not enough for that shot. That'll do it for the first period. 1-1, one, one, RPI Bowling Green is entertaining. Play here. RPI scoring on the power play. Sellers first on the eye tally. With some people starting out for Bowling Green. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. Saves in the first period for Seth Burns and Bowling Green. Shots for 7-6 RPI after one. We'll be back with a second in just a bit. Hey fans, Ryan's Wake, located in downtown Troy, is proud to support RPI Athletics. Welcome small RPI.
We're set for the second period of play here. RPI and Bowling Green tied. At 1-1, RPI on the power play for another minute and 45 seconds. Simon Shelberg will restart things. He'll skate it up ice, waiting for help. Now he drops it back. Walsh well, he gives it away, but wins it right back. <laughs> <laughs> TJ Walsh into the zone. Pulls up there, takes a bump, drops it off for Adamo, and then it leaves the zone. Shelberg had it hop over his stick. Inauspicious start to this power play here in the second. Only about 16 seconds ticked off in the in the first period on this in this one. So RPI gets a, a fresh seat of uh, sheet of ice if they can control the puck here, and I can say words correctly. Adamo to the point. Back up top, this is Chelberg. Wrist shot through traffic, saved by Rose, and he didn't give up a rebound. And there's still a minute to go on this power player there about Stan, and uh, RPI finally was able to set up in the offensive zone there. Yeah, it seemed like nobody wanted the puck there for a couple of minutes. Draw here, engineers win it. Shot by Hallbauer is blocked. And now back it goes behind the net. Now Hallbauer again, tipped to the line. Baxter kept it, uh, kept it alive, and it'll be sent right back down the ice. Hallbauer for RPI from Howell, New Jersey, a senior. Offensive D-man, he likes to start the rush, likes to join the rush. Now a cross-ice pass, a little nonchalant there from Baxter. And this RPI power play is uh, sputtered out at the end. Baxter, Hallbauer, five to go on the man advantage. Chipped in by Mashey, we're back to five aside here. And Schneider out of the box for Bowling Green. RPI now one for two on the power play. Falcons did not convert their only man advantage opportunity. We had a center ice draw coming on top of the RPI crest. And Seal here at the Houston Fieldhouse. Face off, we'll do it again. Face off win here for Bowling Green, and that'll hop out of play. Uh, Klee, far side, that's Davies lost the puck. And it comes in on goal, Marshall has to cover up. That uh, developed out of almost nothing and Bowling Green nearly got a chance out of it. Yeah, O'Hara was trying to put that through the five hole, just whiffed on it. Nonchalant play there defensively and Coach Smith pulls him off the ice. Shots are 8-8. Johnson behind for Surdy. Now Johnson again. Touch pass up the wall, a little tic-tac-toe, and they move it out to center. And that'll be off of a stick and into the Falcons bench. A little bit of a disjointed beginning <laughs> to this bit. period. That's an understatement. Not much going Let's on. Go. <laughs> 
The period started, everybody. It's, let's uh, get back to what was going on in the first. That was that was entertaining. I don't know what this is. <laughs> A line change maybe will help that. Henri uh, Schreifels with uh, Jake Gagno and Shane Seller. Could be a decent energy line for this RPI group. Seller already has a power play goal tonight. First as an engineer, 17th of his collegiate career after three years at Dartmouth. He hasn't played in two years. He was an injured in 2019-20. And then last year he transferred to RPI and injured didn't play. Here's a nice move by Schreifels. He'll backhand it down low. Seller on it there. Back to the blue line, some room for Hallbauer. Wrist shot coming, jam try in front. And that was Schreifels looking for the tip home. Didn't come and it's back out to neutral ice. That's more like it. Gagno pulls up at the blue line, fanned on a shot, puck back out to center ice. That's where those turnovers happen, right? Just inside the offensive blue line, you want to get that puck deep. Start the four check as opposed to trying to make a play there. And Bowling Green couldn't handle it and ended up turning it over as well. Zach Dubinsky there, one of RPI's uh, centermen, and it's, he's kind of helped that turnaround in the faceoff department. He'll be in on this draw. Engineers win the faceoff. And it's out to center ice. Dubinsky trying to jump on it. Flip back in deep. Baxter's going to get there. Now a shot deflects over the top. Goes into the netting. We get a stoppage in play. That was number seven, TJ Lloyd, showing his wheels. As he had a RPI four checker trying to Get by him, looking to touch the puck. Now I can hear myself. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse to be able to hear yourself, I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Loose puck in the slot to the point. Lloyd keeps it in. Now a wrister, that one. Zings wide of the goal. Kept in near side by Malmstrom. And a huge hit along the boards. Gets an applause. Now Malmstrom again out of his own zone. Sophomore from Sweden looking for his first points of the year. Turned over the neutral zone. Herman shoots it in. Trying to throw down in front for Laka. That's intercepted. Adam Conquest, he had a goal last night. Turnover in the zone, shot blocked. Lloyd got in the way of that to bail on a teammate as it was Herman gliding into the low slot area trying to jam it home. Good job in a four check there by Otto. He was right on top of things and forced the turnover. Quick pass out in front and as you mentioned, T.J. Lloyd with the good defensive play getting in the shooting lane. Real good scoring opportunity off the four check for RPI. Johnson behind the goal, 30. Tipped out to center. Move back into the RPI zone. 30 goes D to D. Gets it back. And now Adamo. Throws a hit. Now TJ Walsh into the zone. Fires one wide. Picked up by Johnson. Down low. Walsh a shot. That one goes wide again. Second time he's missed the net. Puck is out to center ice. Race for it there. It's controlled by Johnson who takes a hit. And now it'll be shoveled along by Dubinsky. Kick back to the center of the zone. And now a hit thrown by Johnson. They're kind of mucking it around rugby style. And it finally gets thrown in. 
Dubinsky got away with one there. He yeah. was holding on to the forward stick of Bowling Green. There's an interference. There's a down goes Barber. Who's the penalty on? I didn't hear a whistle. I think it's on the engineer. It's going to be a trip. Yeah. It, I mean, it was Barber who went to the ice and then no whistle. Maybe I just couldn't hear it. Power play coming up here for Bowling Green. I thought it was Surdy that did the interference. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's a trip, but. Oh, is it? it yeah. Same result here. Power play for Bowling Green. It's their second of the game. Bowling Green had a, uh, a power play goal yesterday. Here's shot comes in from Schneider. Just went wide. Now again it's Schneider walking in, looking for a shooting lane. Back post, crashing to the net. There was, well, who was that? That was Burke. <laughs> Burke, okay. He's behind somebody now. There he is. Yeah, he was going hard to net on the backside. Looking for the back door play. Puck didn't get through to him. I think it hit him in the body and he just, his momentum carried forward into uh, Lyndon Marshall. There it is again. You see him on the backside looking for that. Good defensive play by the RPI defenseman to get a stick on that and deflect it wide. So good defending there by Klee. Puck goes behind the goal. Lift it on out, all the way down it goes, wide of the cage. But help the side by Rose. Shaquan, a little drop pass at center. We see teams do that now. On the breakout of the power play. Shaquan touches it back. Kind of flubbed the pass, but Bowling Green keeps it alive. Here's Swankler, he gives it away. Lepin and shorthanded. Yeah, those are the kind of fancy plays that put daggers into power plays. Yeah, they're trying to do a little too much at the blue line, and if Leffernan had a little more speed going the other way, it could have been something. Snyder is shooting in. Stopped up behind the goal. Fouled for there, Hallbauer. Malmstrom blue line, faking a shot over there. The Swankler pulled it down. Schneider now. Takes a look, back up top, Malmstrom a shot through traffic, hit a skate, went to the corner. Wrap back to the half wall. Malmstrom walking in, a shot to flex off a body in front. That was Ryan O'Hara, freshman from Oakville, Ontario, in his collegiate debut. Gets a chance on the power play. O'Hara again walking in, a shot that's blocked by Hallbauer. Five to go on the power play. Rister, that hits the body and goes into the net, and that'll do it for the man advantage. Swankler was a little upset there. He was looking for the pass. Schneider decided to shoot. Swankler went to the bench. So we'll have a stoppage here. 11.38 to go in the second. No goals here so far in period number two. And here's a killed off the power play. Bowling Green at the beginning of the period killed off an RPI man advantage that he carried over for almost a full two minutes. Engineers looking to regain that sharpness they had early on in the first when they were creating some chances. Yeah, they've kind of fallen back into that nice sandbox play again. Yeah, get out of the sandbox. <laughs> Seller tried to dump it in, but it was broken up nicely by Lloyd. He's had a good series. He's not a very big guy, Lloyd. TJ Lloyd, 5'9", 172, but he can play at both ends of the ice very well. He's blocked some shots. Good passer. Dumped in there by Gagno. Stopped by the netminder, Rose. He's a solid team in Bowling Green. I think they're picked third in the CCHA. The brand new CGHA is back for those that missed it. 
not quite the same as the Michigan Michigan State days. No. <laughs> no. A different look, I guess. But they've rebranded and they're back with the, a, a, another group of teams. The Bowling Green is back in it. They were in it. Now with the WCHA, now they're back. That's right. I grew up with the old WCHA, so I can relate. The Golden Gophers used to play in that league. Yeah. Golden Gopher transfers here. On his Bowling Green team. There's a shot flipped over the top and off the end glass. 30 gets a poke to it. Barber trying to find it. Whacked around behind. Schneider. A lot of offensive zone time for Bowling Green in this period. Shaquan throws it across. Long shot, easily seen and held by, by Marshall. I'm not sure if that's exactly what Parker was looking for. Maybe a deflection, the freshman from Calgary on that right point. Yeah, he got it through the net. Bowling Green didn't have anybody in front. Lyndon Marshall saw it all the way in and decided to hold on to it. RPI gets a change. I follow, yeah, Go I, ahead. I, I, I follow the Gophers back in the, the Brian Bonnet, the Brian Bonnet days. We went Hobie uh, for for Doug Wood. That, that was my Gopher team. If you can remember that, Coach. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah, I do. Coach Wood had some real good teams. Oh yeah. Only took Minnesotans back then. That's right. A little bit of a recruiting, well, it was a good and a bad thing, I guess. If you wanted someone from outside. Now there's a big hit in the penalty coming here. And Baxter has a few words there for Adam Conquest. I'm not sure what that was about. What do you think? I think they're just, again, getting to know each other a little better. Second game of a series. That stuff tends to happen. Could be a hook. <laughs> Excitement of the fans behind the penalty box. They love it when the other team takes the penalty here. They're sitting right behind them. They can, they can harangue them. Yeah, Baxter let them know. They gave a little shove after the play there. It was a hook. Green penalty to number 13, Adam Conquest. And we'll have a stoppage here. And the shovelers are out to clear some of the ice surface here. Yeah, I saw Lyndon Marshall come over and take his helmet off, and I was like, what's going on? And then the doors open. <laughs> he knew what was going on. Just inside the 10-minute mark. Your support of Let's Go Red ensures that current and future generations of student athletes continue to receive the opportunity to balance the rigors of academics with collegiate athletics. Learn more about how you can help RPI hockey directly at giving.rpi.edu. Engineers are home again the next weekend, Dan. Hosting Canisius for two. Coach Smith's old team. Yeah. Prior to a few years ago, the engineers and Golden Griffiths had never played before. But Coach Smith made sure that would, that changed in a hurry. Down there is Staple. There's really one for two. Shane uh, Seller scoring on RPI's first man advantage. And the second one left a bit to be desired. But with another opportunity comes another chance to add to the, uh, the numbers here. It's cleared all the way down. They Marshall's going to come out and play it. Dangerously, and he gives it away in the corner. And he has to make a save on a very tight angle shot from Barber. Bowling Green plays that neutral zone diamond real well on the yeah. penalty kill. They force RPI to dump it, and then they just ring it hard and tap out of the zone. And that's not how you enter a zone over there. Although RPI might be able to keep it alive here. Walsh gets dumped, puck to the point. Mar uh, Linden trying to get there, and it's out to center ice. Scardina throws it across. And now Clinton, maybe a two-on-one shorthand. It's Gardena over skates the puck. And the engineers are back out the other way with speed. It's Bowman. Bowman driving in. Bowman a shot. He caught the left pad of Rose on its way in and kicks behind the key. 
Nice little rush there out of a broken play in the neutral zone. Yes, Gardina almost had himself another one yeah. shorthanded. Uh, hit there as Bowman runs into the, the lines with their Adam Wood. And it's cracked right back down the ice. 25 to go in this RPI power play. Power play units early in the season are still trying to sort some things out, right? You don't really have a, a true feel for how players are going to be and where they're going to be until this is shot into the crowd, until maybe the midway point of the year. You don't really look at percentages until that point either. Yeah, and percentages can be deceiving because, you know, you might be on the power play and then take a penalty, and that still counts as a power play, even though you play the rest of it four minutes. And then the other team gets a 30-second power play, and it counts as a power play. It can be deceiving. Center ice face off here, 12 to go in RPI's third power play. Those are the things, special teams, that you really want clicking midway to the end of the year. Uh -huh. It could be the difference in winning and losing hockey games. RPI was very good on the kill in 2019 20. No surprise, they were over 86%, and that is going to be a whistle and a neutralized face off here. What's, what's the magic number? Would you say 85%, above 85% is pretty good penalty kill? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, as a, as a team, you have concepts, you know, right. where they mishandle the puck, you want to attack. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's times when you have pressure, and there's times when you have to contain from a defensive perspective. And it's a fine line. If you're going to pressure, you have to have all four guys on the penalty kill pressuring at all times. It doesn't work when you have one or two pressuring with the other two containing. Flipped into the RPI end, and Davies will head back for it, making his hit a collegiate debut along with the Schreifels and Gagno. Gagno and Schreifels are sophomores. Davies also a sophomore. And now a turnover here, Seller trying to fire a shot, and he does eventually find it. He had to kind of reach back for that thing, then Schreifels gets dumped in front of the net. Fans don't like it, but uh, when, you, when you head to the net front, you might get popped like that, and it's kind of part of the game. Well, I think that puck just jumped on Seller before he pulled the trigger yeah. on it, and I don't know whether he was looking to shoot or realized how much open space he had <laughs> to the net and figured maybe I'll carry it yeah. and got a... Average shot on goal. Here it is right here. Oh. Well, found it. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, he had a lot of space there. He did. If he if he picks that up cleanly, he probably gets a better shot off than that. No question. Face off here, one by Bowling Green. Shaquan ahead. Three on three as they hit the line. They're gonna fire it over Marshall's head. Lyndon Marshall at six foot three, one ninety-five. Good solid goaltender. It's the size of goalies these days, although Owen Savory who put together a couple of real good seasons here, was one of the un more undersized goalies for transferring to UMass Lowell. Here's Lappin and dropping it back for Surdy Arister. Loose in front, a couple of jam tries for Herman, but he couldn't find it. It was a bouncing puck, and he just couldn't steer it on goal. That was a good play by the, the uh, Bowling Green defender to tie up the stick. He couldn't get a stick on the puck. Had an open net there for a couple of seconds. Herman backtracking now. Hands it off there for Johnson. Surdy ahead. They wave off the icing right away. Coming up on six to play in the second. 1-1 one, one game. This is a little more the action we were looking for. As Klee gets double teamed and ends up just kind of giving it away there to Burke. Rifles digging for it, and we get a whistle and maybe an offside here. Yeah, that is uh, Michael Noeth. Some some familiar names on the referee chart again. Yeah, C.J. Hannafin's back in there. RPI class of 2005. Kevin Graber, the other referee, the Adam Wood and Michael Noeth. Those are guys we know uh, from from a number of years here. Yes, well, officiating. Mike, there was another Noeth that used to officiate as well, and I think his name was Mike. <laughs> maybe it was his dad. Sw uh, Swankler back behind his own goal. Tour Linden digging for it on the half boards. Back to the point. Hallbauer keeps it alive and dumps it right back in. Had some pace in that thing. Came all the way around to the other point. 
Wrist shot goes wide off the stick of Baxter. Kept in by Adamo. Mentioned it yesterday, but Adamo, I think in his sophomore season, led Robert Morris in shot attempts, or shots on goal, I guess, 97. So he's not afraid to shoot the puck. He's a big guy. I'm sure a lot of those shots are from tips in front of the cage. Yeah. Seems like he would park himself there based on the size. He'd be tough to move out of that great A scoring. Seems area. like a good spot for him anyway. Yeah. Shot in. And it'll be played around to the near side. I remember RPI played against a guy named uh, was it Alexiak for Northeastern. He was the biggest guy I've ever seen at the net front. I think he plays for the Stars now, Dallas Stars. But anyway, yeah, he, he was a defenseman. He, they just, on power plays, they just throw him in front of the net. That's all you got to do. The only thing he, he should do is take the eyes away from the goaltender and having the size and strength, I'm sure he popped in a couple of rebounds along the way. Good stretch pass here, Dubinsky. Gets a touch to it. He'll play it behind for Bowman. To the corner. Bowman with Mashey. Mo Bowman again. Dubinsky trying to throw a blind backhand in front. Loose in the slot. It's going to be covered up. And then Bowman gives a whack. Let's go. But uh, no one seems to be that interested in retaliating. <laughs> There's Rose. He's had a pretty calm demeanor. Right? That's what you want in your goal. He hasn't. He's looked good too. He and Marshall have both been very solid. I agree. I think Bowling Green's in good shape. Evan Rose is the uh, goaltender heading into the season. Face off here, won by the Falcons. They fired around. It's kept in by Laka. And now Lampin it. This is the line that likes yeah, to cycle it up. I was going to say, if this line keeps playing well, they're going to need a name at some point. And my brain is too fried to come up with it right now. So I guess I'll give it some time. There's a puck dumped in. Shelberg back to get it. Throws it down the middle. It's a dangerous pass, but the engineers do pick it up. Lappinen threw it off a skate, gets it back. Flipping it down low for Laka. He can just pass the puck from so many different angles, lapping in. Yeah, he's got some creativity to his game and a great work ethic as well. Puck back out to center ice. It doesn't matter where you are or where he is. It seems like he can find you with a pass. RPI trying to catch Bowling Green on a change now. Lapping in. Drop pass in front. Herman, a shot to save, and he's pulled down, and the penalty is called. Well, he delivers again. <laughs> look at that pass. Yeah, he. you know what? It's a no-look <laughs> pass, and... He knows exactly where his line mate is, and uh, he gets a real good scoring opportunity, Herman, and that was another great save by Rose. It's a slash on Snyder, but it wasn't a goal that Lepinen set up, but it was a power play that he set up when he made that play and forced Schneider to take down Herman. Bowling Green 15 to number 11, Taylor Schneider. It's a couple of penalties now for Schneider. Time of the penalty, 17 minutes, one second. RPI Eleven one for three on the man advantage. Here's Chelber. About a minute difference between the power play clock and the game clock here in the second. And she would like nothing more than to take the lead back here. Well, I guess for the first time in, in this one, but they have led this weekend. Shelbert. Walsh. Throws it back between Adamo and Shelberg. Interesting that they got Adamo on the, on the flank. On the wall, yeah. his size, you know. They might like his shot. I was going to say. His body position. Right. It's, it's a different game now. Like if you have guys on the outside shooting. Yeah. As opposed to just camping out in front of the net, maybe. Yeah, and he's definitely set up for a one-timer at the top of that circle. Here is Mashy now. Walking it down low. Make it Seller, rather. Up top, Shelberg, wrist shot coming. That one might have hit Seller, who's trying to provide a screen. And it's kicked out to the point, but a nice keep there by Shelberg. His pass skips by Adamo. Seller trying to dig it out of the corner. He has the power play goal today to Shane. Threw it into the middle, trying to tap it across, and it's broken up again. Walsh turns back towards the half wall. 44 to go in the power play. Fanned on the shot. Picked up by Linden. Backdoor feed, one-timer, Adamo snapped his stick. Into really no one's surprise, I guess. 
for the big man, but he gets another one quickly. There's a wrister, and that one hit a, the shaft of a stick on his way through. I thought I heard it. 23 seconds to go on the man advantage now. Walsh walking in, feeds it across, and a good defensive stick by Scardina breaks things up. That's going to be interference yeah. on the Domo. Yeah, he got right in the way. And that'll do it for the RPI power play. Well, they had some good looks. Yeah. That's exactly why Dama's on the flank. Because if you look at the other side, you can't work. You got two left shots, one at the top, one on the uh, other flank, and you can't work a one-timer from that side. Interference on Adamo, right? And it was kind of wrong place, wrong time. But he, you kind of can't throw your body into him when you're when you're in that position. So four on four for 11 seconds. Well, you can hold your ground, make the right. car go around you. There's a shot blocked. Fed across, walking in, they score. It's a four on four goal. Wow, that was impressive. And he went right up top with it. Yeah, he waited so for uh, Marshall to commit. So not only do they score, but they're going to get a power play in five seconds. Real nice patience by Burke, too. Face off win, still four on four, about to be a power play. Last minute of play. And it's the most minute of the game. If your engineers score in the last minute, fans receive the And RPI on the kill for the most minute, that's not going to make the fans too happy. If they score, please stop. Barber walked into the zone. And redeem your free taco. And let's go red. Back to the Bowling Green end, Shaquan. 30 seconds to go in the period, so now the Falcons might have a power play carryover. Trying to jump the play was Dubinsky. But Shaquan recovers in time to tie him up, and it's going to be shot in. Klee trying to clear. Shaquan keeps it. Swankler. He's been set up on that right point on every power play here for the Falcons. Now Schneider. Although that time he crept down low. Barber in front, Burke with a shot right before the horn. It probably would have counted if he was able to sneak it in, but couldn't get it past Marshall. Two to one is the Bowling Green lead after two periods of play. A late four on four goal, the only goal of the period. As the Falcons on top. And the Falcons will have a fresh surface of ice to finish off the power play. Should have about 45 seconds left on it. We'll have that third period for you in just a bit. Your score after two here is Bowling Green 2 and RPI 1. You're watching RPI Hockey on RPI TV and ESPN.
Well, we got some out of town scores. Quinnipiac is, well, actually, they beat Northeastern 3 0 today. Union is up over UNH after two periods 1 0. Colgate and University of Vermont are tied at one after two periods. And CC and SLU are nodded at zero after one. They're out in the west, out in Colorado. Bouncing puck out to center. Of course, uh, Colorado College was where Don Lucia used to coach for a number of years, and now he's the commissioner of the CCHA. Yeah, St. Lawrence beat them last night 3 0. They're off to a good start. Slew trying to carry over from last year when half the league wasn't playing, ECAC that is. And Swankler trying to walk it in. Back up top, Shaquan, a shot, he missed it wide. Yeah, St. Lawrence was the surprise team in ECAC hockey last year. Actually covered a couple of their games on the radio with no other sports going on. Yeah, tough way for their season to end. Yeah, right. They win the championship, but Quinnipiac, the ECAC. Uh, regular season. Regular season, that's right. They represent the league because of the COVID. Yep. It happened to a couple of teams. Michigan had their season end because of COVID. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> on their way to the NCAA tournament, and I believe also, no, BC played. That's right. But one, somebody got to buy. I'm, I'm blanking on this now. It's but no, it was Notre Dame. Notre Dame, yeah. It was Notre Dame. They, yep. they couldn't play because of, no, of COVID. Yeah, they flew here on a Thursday, got <laughs> COVID tested. They had three positives and yep. flew home. Yeah, not a great way to spend your year by any means. But, yeah, that you really felt for the St. Lawrence kids who won the, won the conference tournament then a losing record overall. Yeah, they played real well down yeah, the stretch. for sure. This is 30. Nice little maneuver into the corner. Now he spins it down low for Dubinsky. Power play is over, by the way, if I didn't mention it. That one snapped wide. So RPI 1 for 4 in the man advantage so far. Bowling Green's 0 for 3. As uh, one of the Falcons was spun to the ice, but nothing called. That was uh, Fighton, Seth Fighton, sophomore from. Didsbury, Alberta. This is shot all the way down the ice. If it's on goal, it won't be icing, and it's actually going to be covered up by Marshall. I don't think it was headed on goal anyway, but he had that uh, right post covered with his stick uh, blocker hand there. So it will be a draw in the RPI end. 17-24 on the clock, third period, RPI down a goal. Yeah, that negated the icing because it was on goal. Happened to catch his pad. And he covers it up for a faceoff. And we're going to do this faceoff over again. Shots are 15 to 12 RPI. And here is Wozni, throws it into the crease. It's going to be covered up by Marshall. He had no idea where that puck was. It just hit him. He had a lot of traffic in front of the net. Had to get down to the butterfly in order to see the shot. Yeah, O'Hara was digging away in there. Ryan O'Hara, I mentioned he's making his collegiate debut. He's from Oakville, Ontario. 5'10", 175. He centers this fourth line. And he wins another draw here. Wozni. Kept alive. It'll wrap around. Laka can't clear. Pinching on the far side was Coyle. Now O'Hara again. Spins it all the way behind the cage. Denal. And now Conquest. Slips away from Chelberg. This fourth unit providing some good pressure here for the Falcons. Chelberg gives a shove to Conquest behind the goal. Knocked out of the air. Thought it was played by the high stick, but they say no, that was uh, Herman. Laka. Herman. Goes backwards with it. Now finally, Bowling Green wants to change. That's why RPI is allowed to leave the zone. 
Uh, it'll be Herman moving in. Back to the point. Fed off the end wall. This is Schneider. Lob to center and all the way down the ice. Does not have the legs for ice and they wave it off. Hallbauer leaves it in the corner, but Schneider's there. First one to it. Barber across. One time shot save. Rebound put wide. Oh my, still loose. And it's gloved at. That's going to be a, it's a hand pass for sure. Yeah. Wow. Would they like yeah. another look at that one? And the crowd getting excited over some pushing and shoving here. Hallbauer and Craigs are going at it. A little push and Marshall shoving. made a sprawling save on Craigs. That was the highlight reel stop. That was and then another one was put wide by Craigs. There's the save. Well, that's, we're not seeing it here. There we're going to see the save. No, nope, we're seeing Schneider. There's the save, and then Craig's had another chance he put wide. Yes, because uh, the momentum of Marshall coming from the left post to the right post carried him across the crease, and he left the net wide open. I'm actually surprised there was no penalty on number 28 for RPI, Kalbauer. Now, engineer falls down the neutral zone. Swankler plays it ahead. And now Johnson. They're letting him play. Yeah, no kidding. 30. Gets it back from Jake Johnson. Norris, a shot saved by Marshall. And Gagno trying to scoop it out to center. Didn't get enough on it. And now they're pinned up behind the RPI net. Johnson trying to dig out with a skate. Has to be careful with the stick there, Surdy. He had it between the legs of Swankler. Work back to the point now. Coyle will make that uh, Malmstrom, rather. And Antoine Malmstrom shot is into the netting. Five minutes gone here in the third period. Two to one is the Bowling Green lead, and they're looking like they're going to try to add another here. RPI's been pinned in pretty well here in this third period. Yeah, they've had the RPI on their heels here in the first five minutes. RPI having a tough time breaking the puck out of the zone. That's due to the Bowling Green before check that they're working right now. This will be wrapped out of the zone. Icing is going to be the call. Well, that's not the ticket. Although this group did just get out there for a guy, but they saw themselves. Stamina should not be an issue, at least in the short term, for this RPI group. It's always interesting when you have your first two-game weekend. Yeah, right? How, the, how you feel with your legs in the second night? Lloyd shot to flex. I think he might have hit the right pad of Marshall. Kicked it. Might have been headed wide anyway. Malmstrom fires wide. Off the glass to center. Lloyd. Chipped off the boards. And it's going to be icing. I don't know why Lloyd reminds me of a younger Nick Balin. He doesn't know you're right about that. He's in that same that mold, right? Yeah. Undersized, like real shifty, good offensively, good I'm vision. I'm not sure if Nick was even 5'10". I hope he's not listening. <laughs> I think he was actually lifted at 5'9". Well, wasn't he a Bowling Green? Yeah, transfer he transferred. Well? Trans you're right, and he was yeah. a, a hundred point getter between yeah. the two schools. From the blue line, there's a shot and a glove save by Rose. I don't know how he saw that through all that mess. Yeah, he was uh, RPI's last 100-point scorer. And, uh, no, excuse me, yeah, and the last uh, first-team All-American. Yes. Ben McBalen, early part of last decade. Was Almost it? 10 years ago now, <laughs> believe it or not. Feel like, feels like yesterday. I was going to say, that was about 2011, maybe? 11, yeah. 11, 11 12, 12 yep. 15. Anyway, yeah, that was one of the more successful transfers 
in RPI hockey history. They're hoping for a few more of those because there's six of them on this team. <laughs> this is going to be flipped off a stick out to center ice, chopped back into the zone. A couple of Falcons need to touch up, and that might be intentional offside on Craig's. He just kicked the puck. He knew he was offside. Although, when they call that, it seems to be quite almost random. Yeah, I think because the, uh, the guy coming out of the zone, mm -hmm. the puck was shot into him as opposed to I him playing. All oh, yeah. right, you're right. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's all the judgment of the referee whether they call that. All it means is a faceoff would be back in Bowling Green territory. Nothing more egregious than that. That was a shot over the top of Marshall from Craig's. Tap back to the point. Bowling Green in the middle of a change. Have to be careful when they touch this puck. They do it legally. Barber going to sweep it in. With a one-goal lead, Bowling Green can afford to, and <laughs> Surdy just loses an edge and falls down. They can afford to be a little more uh, careful with their attack here. As Lepinen tried to enter the zone, it was broken up. Shot back in wide of Rose by Surdy. Otto Vile Lepinen has his man tied up. Big hit by Johnson. Puck out to center. Surdy. Shoots it off the wall. Laka trying to play it on for Lepinen. It was broken up and intercepted. Falcons have the clamps down right now defensively. RPI can't seem to figure them out through the neutral zone. No, they're just getting out there, expending some energy, and then quick changes. Now Herman shoots it off the wall to himself. That's a nifty play. He'll shoot it in. Malmstrom takes a look. He'll ring it around. Tipped high in the air. It'll come down at the RPI blue line. That was Denal making the deflection. Now a chance for a, a break here. It's the freshman O'Gara walking in, and he was wrapped up by Klee and somehow didn't take a penalty. Looked like Klee, Klee kind of grabbed his shoulder there, but was yeah. able to get off unscathed there. That's what I thought. So a tie-up on the wall. Maybe RPI catches a break here. Mason Klee on the puck now. On a Morrison, Colorado, son of Ken Klee, longtime NHLer, over a decade in the professional, the top professional league, North America. I guess people know what the NHL is. Here's Linden. RPI is having a real tough time getting through the neutral zone with their offense. Bowling Green's doing a good job of playing neutral zone defense on them. Burke gets roughed up there by Baxter. And now Shane Seller putting the four-check pressure on. Works it loose. Bouncing puck. And tied up is Tour Linden. A good four-check there by the former Dartmouth Big Green, Shane Seller. Grad student. Has RPI's lone goal tonight. It was a power play tally. Way back in the first period. Still 11 and change to play here in this one. And RPI only down a goal. This is Bowman on the stick handle, poked off his stick, turned around quickly, but right onto the tape of Halbauer. Now Bowman has to touch up as Halbauer shoots it in. Dubinsky throwing his weight around as it's a spin move from Halbauer, looking for the tip from Bowman. Didn't get it, or did he? No. Icing on RPI. 10.56 to play. Shots are 18-16, Bowling Green. Kind of a long shift here for the... Five guys out there for RPI. Bowling Green gets a quick change with the offensive zone faceoff for them. Faceoff, and we got a whistle here and a penalty, maybe an interference on the faceoff. We've seen that call more and more in recent years, and that's a, a bad place and time for this penalty here for Bowling Green. Yeah, no question. So a power play chance for the engineers. They're one for four on the day. We'll see, they got Seller out there. This is the unit that produced the goal. I guess that's who you start with. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> perfect time for it. Bowling Green penalty to number six, Alex Barker. Face-off win for the engineers, Adamos. Back to the point, Walsh has to chase after it, he'll work it down low. Seller around for Adamo. 
Shelber, Adamo, twisting and turning, works it down low. Adamo for Chelbert, flipped one towards goal, nearly got there. He didn't have a lot on the shot, but it's cleared out to center ice. A minute 35 to go in the man advantage. Starting things back up is Chelberg, and now Seller sending it backwards. Linden to Walsh, nice little saucer pass. Walsh going to carry in. It's, uh, Seller across. Adamo, haven't seen his big shot yet in this game. Waiting for him to pull the trigger. Now Chelberg, top of the circle. Rister coming, that one's blocked as it was fighting who got in the way of it. Walsh right back down low. Adamo, halfway through the man advantage, halfway through the period. Adamo to Chelmer. Here's Walsh, top of the circle, feeding it across for Adamo. Didn't look like he was ready for it. And then Chelber, uh, Chelberg's upended. Race for the puck, and Walsh has to get on his horse. Good awareness and speed there from TJ Walsh. Uh, the former Northeastern Husky had to get back there as his fellow point man, Chelberg, went down in the play. Good thing they got a, he's a forward. Good thing he's back <laughs> out there on the point on the power play. Under 30 to go on the man advantage. Baxter spinning around to the neutral zone finds a Hallbauer who dumps it in. There's a reason why you have one of your fastest skaters at the top of the um, power play. Here is Hallbauer now across for Dubinsky. Up top, Baxter fan on the shot. Shot by uh, Mashi is blocked as it was Chiquan who got in the way. Power play, five seconds to go on it. Engineers keep it in and we got a penalty coming up on RPI. Insult to injury there, you don't score, and then a slash is gonna go, I think, on, is that Hallbauer they got? Nope, they got Bowman. Yep. So with one second on the Barber penalty. This kind of favors Bowling Green right now because they just kill off a penalty. They're going to be looking to use that momentum to carry into the power play, but it looks like Bowling Green might have called a timeout. Could be. Yeah, Barber waving at the penalty cameras. Yeah, nope. Bowman, yeah, he slashed him across the legs there. Yeah. And maybe a bit of a sell job, but you can't do what, what Bowman did. Norris, I think he recognized the situation and went down. And it's a media timeout, not a right, not, not, a, a, not a Bowling Green timeout. Right. Well, yeah. we're in this, uh, we're in this stoppage. I want to give a shout out to uh, uh, to one of your former players, Nolan Graham, who's watching out in Western Canada. Is he? Yeah. You got any message for Nolan? Perfect. Hope he's doing well. Me too. Nolan, of course, a former player and coach for RPI. We're hoping he's uh, he and the family are doing well out there. I always miss Nolan. Loved my conversation with him, and he was a coach here at RPI. And I remember recruiting Nolan out yeah. with the Chilliwack Chiefs out in British Columbia. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure he's not far from there now. I think he's over in Nanaimo. Okay. Out on the island. I think you're right. Yeah. So we yeah. have one second difference here for uh, a minute 59 of power play time for Bowling Green. Big spot in this game, for sure. Face-off win for RPI, 30. Goes backwards with it. As Barber's out of the box and the engineer's clear. Barber will just join the power play unit now. Fourth power play for Bowling Green. Shot in by Schneider. Well, fanning on the clearance there was Johnson. Gets it back. Nice play to knock it out of the air. Now Barber. Back to the blue line. Swankler. Shaquan. Barber had to hop over or under his stick. Had to go back to the half boards to play it. And it's lifted out by 30.
Here is Shaquan. Barber flips it into the corner. Klee clears it out. Pretty fundamental penalty killing right now from RPI through halfway point of this man advantage. Yeah, it was a bad dump by Bowling Green. They sent it into a corner where they didn't have any support. The support was all RPI, and down the ice it went. Back into the zone they come. A little bit of speed this time. It's the defenseman Malmstrom. Back to the point. That was uh, O'Hara taking his spot. It's back out to neutral ice. Have to like what you've seen from O'Hara if you're Bowling Green. This is his first collegiate game. He's been all over the place, and he's on this power play unit again. Not a very big kid either. He's this is only 5'10", but a little speed in his game. Here's Craig's now. Wrapping it around. It's a bouncing puck. And Herman can't clear. Lloyd keeps it in. O'Hara trying to spin off the boards. A lot of pressure on him from Baxter. And RPI is able to clear again with two seconds. And just like that, the penalty is over. Nice job on the kill for RPI. They're four for four killing off penalties tonight. Yeah, they're doing outstanding. They're doing a lot of pressure, too. And now a giveaway. And Mashey scores! Oh, boy, Ryan Mashey takes uh, advantage of a big mistake by the Falcons, and it's tied at two. Well, I think a great goal. I mean, being persistent, looked like uh, Mamstrom wanted the penalty there. Take another look at it. Yeah, he got... I mean, uh, I don't... Dubinsky's not going to get an assist for that, but he, he knocked Mellstrom off the puck behind yeah. the goal. Yeah, I didn't think that was a penalty. Good play. Malmstrom just needs to get the puck off his stick, I guess, there. But, you know, credit to Binsky for putting that pressure on and Mashey in the right place at the right time. Number 25, Ryan Mashey. Unassisted at 15-15. Funny how things develop. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a bit of, bit of momentum from the penalty kill for RPI. Yeah. yeah. Who knows, yeah. but Dubinsky certainly created that play. And a lackadaisical play right. by the uh, defenseman of yeah. Bowling Green. And a giveaway at the top of the zone by the engineers, and the shot went wide. Blue line out of the zone as Wozni couldn't keep it in. Stick handling is Walsh along his own blue line. Now he'll turn back towards his own zone. And here we are again. 2-2. Two -two. Nolan says he's in Nanaimo, people were wondering. It's a tight angle shot. It's off the back of the net. Schneider a backhander. And then picked up by Chelberg. And he'll skate it to safety. Here is... Bowman and the shot comes in. It was blocked. <laughs> Bowman again trying to backhand it out in front. Dubinsky couldn't get there. And the Falcons clear to center. Snyder shot wide off the glass. Barber. And Dubinsky kicks it to himself. Lost it in the transition there, back into RPI territory. Neither team uh, can get anything going offensively right now, other than that turnover, which caused the score. Herman. See if this line can get something going again, like they did last night. Produced both goals for RPI in yesterday's game. Laka. Throws it off the end boards. That's Baxter down low, the defenseman. Baxter hands it off for Jacob Laka. Snapped home a goal yesterday. His sixth career goal. Now, Lepinen will flip one in, and seeing that one was Rose. And I don't feel like Lepinen trying to join on the uh, scoring party here, but he couldn't get it past him. Yeah, they do a great job in the cycle. They protect the puck. Good offensive pressure. See if Lionel Richie gets the boys fired up here. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Faceoff win for Bowling Green. Nice pinch there by Johnson. Off for Tour Linden. Feeding it across and maybe one too many passes there. Back to the point for Jake Johnson. He'll throw one towards goal. It was blocked by the leg of Swankler. And you don't win. You're not CCAHA preseason rookie of the year if you don't do some things at the defensive end, too, right? Here's Linden trying to center it. Walsh. He can't find it, Seller can, and he throws his hands over his head as he wanted to do better with that than fire it into the midsection of the goaltender. <laughs> yeah, when you get opportunities like that, you gotta, you know, maybe wait it out a little bit, take your time. He just came in and hammered it. <laughs> he had a little bit of a five hole open, yeah, he, but. You can't shoot it through the goalie there, Shane. <laughs> well, you know, there is that philosophy <laughs> that if he's gonna stop it, make it hurt. <laughs> Shots are 19 apiece, 3.35 to go in regulation. No mystery over whether it's going to be a shootout. It will not be a shootout. <laughs> if we don't get a winner here, we'll play three on three overtime hockey. And if we still don't have one after five minutes, it's another time. Puck off the glass of center. And offside are the Falcons. They're not going to blow it dead. Might have hit Snyder's skate, but no harm, no foul. And then the FBI ices it, so. Maybe they prefer the offside. It's crunch time again in a 2-2 game. This feels like a little bit like a deja vu. <laughs> exactly. Maybe you were right. Maybe the uh, women took all the goals. Yeah, our guy women's hockey. Yeah, no. <laughs> big win. Hope you were watching earlier. Is If not, I guess you can find the highlights online. But a 9-2 win as that shot went wide. For RPI, uh, RPI women today over Union College, completing the weekend sweep. They won 4-0 in Schenectady on Friday. So RPI opens ECACA hockey play at 2-0. And, oh, and they, more importantly, or as importantly, snapped a 31-game losing streak on Friday. Puck back to center. Shelberg was forced there by Craggs. He got Klee on the puck now. Audrey McCutcheon, a freshman, had one goal coming in. In her first five games for RPI, had a hat trick. First hat trick. Since 2015, Alexa Grushaw went on to play in the NWHL, now the professional women's uh, group. Well, there is a timeout. Somebody took one here. RPI takes a timeout. timeout Maybe Coach Smith yeah. wants to. Sorry, she, just want to finish my point. The, the, yeah. the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association is where Grushaw ended up. But she was a, an MVP of the NWHL a number of years ago, right after she graduated. She's one of, you know, she played for RPI. Obviously, she's the last hat trick by an RPI women's hockey player uh, back in 2015 against New Hampshire. Sorry. That's I, okay. I, wanted to, I wanted to finish the point about, yeah. about the hat trick that uh, McCutcheon had earlier today. So yeah, a two-game winning streak after you lose 31 in a row, you win two in a row? Yeah. That's got to feel pretty good <laughs> for Coach Vines. Oh, no question. Like I said, early in the season, too, you can build off those successes, especially from a team perspective. You get some confidence. Hey, that's real important. Face-off coming up in the RPI zone. Is a I think there's a timeout there. Now RPI took a timeout. Face off here. Shot comes in. That was stopped. Laka's going to turn it up ice. Flips ahead. It was broken up by Fighton. And now a hit thrown on Scardina, but Falcons keep on coming. Johnson up the wall. Lapping it a Lifted on further, Herman turns on the Jets. He'll poke it on. Rory Herman trying to slip through a stick check. Lapping in now, shielding, twisting and turning. Ran out of room at the blue line. He'll throw it back down low. Here's Herman again. 2.18 left in regulation. Herman trying to shake his man. Back to the point. Hallbauer, wrist shot, blocked into the netting. I think he hit the first man there, uh, Brayden Krieger. Freshman from Elora, Ontario. Yeah, get back to Nolan 
Yeah. It was BC, Bill Cahill at, at first. Recruited him, right? him. Yep, yep. BC was outstanding late, oh, yeah. uh, Bill Cahill. Speaking of women's hockey, he, would, they, he was beloved by the women's program here. Yes. For the few years he was able to coach. Unfortunately, we lost Kay, uh, Bill. Yeah, too soon. Yeah. Oh, I feel him. He's still in here. Oh, they felt him earlier today. I tell you that. <laughs> Nine goals. I'm sure he's smiling down on that. And his Red Sox tied up the series last night with Tampa. It's a big weekend for Bill. Wrapped up behind the RPI net. That was uh, Burke. I uh, was trying to spin loose is Norris right to the net front and Marshall found it somehow. I think he hit a skate on the way in. Looked like he was trying to take that from his back and to his forehand and uh, lost it and Burke took a shot at it right here. Tries to take it and Burke ends up getting a little bit of a shot away. He was tied up by Baxter in front of the net. Good job tying up the stick. One thirty-two to go in regulation in a 2-2 game. Puck back to center. Shaquan had it momentarily. Now Johnson into the zone. Barber digs it out and finds Parker. Tight angle shot off the side of the net from Craggs. This is the final Chopped at by Bowman. Maybe a three on two if the engineers hurry here. Dubinsky carries in. Feeds it across. Mashi a shot save. Rebound Mashi again. Rebound again. And Dubinsky's jamming away and he gets smothered. Wow, what a rush there. Mashi had two cracks at. Dubinsky might have had one himself. Great opportunity on a three on two. That's how you want to execute it. And they have a little bit of a rebound there. And boy, you got four Bowling <laughs> Green guys in the crease. Dubinsky's not a big guy, and they're, he was surrounded. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, Rose, Rose took it. Hope he's all right. He's back up on his feet. He, I think Dubinsky got shoved into Rose by one of his teammates. He got and he's back up. Four he's a tough guy. Green guys and one RPI guy there in the crease. I like the Zach Rose. Yeah, he's a good player. He's good goaltender. He's tough too. And it didn't seem like anything. A lot of times you see someone whacking at your glove or your your skates when you have to freeze a puck yeah. like Bowman was doing. He just completely unfazed. I like that. Yeah. He has a nice Some goalies can get hot headed and kind of go after somebody. He's like, whatever. I'm wearing pads. Yeah. I don't care. Backhanded in there by Laka. He's very good at maintaining his composure. He knows Absolutely. what he needs to do. Absolutely. Kept his team in it, as Marshall has. The game tying goal as it stands. He was left out to dry there. It was Mashy one-on-one -on -one with him right in front of the net. Chelberg will fire this in. Wide a goal. 12 seconds to go before we head to overtime again. As it'll be picked up here by... Lampin in. He's being pressured by Scardina, but turns it up ice with one, and they'll do it for the second night in a row. It's 2-2 as we go to overtime. Shots are 21 apiece in this game. RPI with a 34-28 edge in faceoffs. What do you think, Dan? Hey, home weekend, two games, same score, <laughs> both going to overtime. Yeah, well, three on three. I expect, I expect a goal. We expected to win one last night. It's three on three. That's why they that's why they changed it. And it's NCAA, of Six course, wanted more goals. Be a lot of open ice out there. <laughs> and some team is going to be well, some team might make some defensive mistake, or you might have a great offensive play by someone. And this is where, as coaches, you're looking for one of your players to step up. And uh, put this game in the W column. Unfortunately, it didn't happen last night for RPI, but we'll see what happens tonight. Another night, different game, maybe a different outcome.
In the third period, Union College is up on UNH, two to one. There's 12 minutes left in that game. Colgate is up two to one with six minutes left. They're playing at Vermont. And because of the time difference, there's no score with Clarkson <laughs> and a, a Alaska. They haven't started yet. That game starts at 11, I think, Eastern. We'll be out there. I will. <laughs> what do you got? All right, we're going to overtime here. Baxter out there with Linden and Walsh. This looks familiar. Same group that started the OT last night. We get some more OT practice here. Of course, in ECAC hockey play, there will be a shootout if teams are still tied after the five-minute overtime for an extra point in the standings. That's new this year. Back to the top of the circle and fired wide by Baxter. Both teams have elected to go with two forwards and one D. Here's Shaquan, one of the, or the lone D, if you will. Now Schneider walking in, little toe drag. He gets dumped there by Dubinsky. Now Walsh, all by himself, goes backwards with it. RPI's gonna get a partial change here. And uh, now at the wall, it is Johnson. Johnson ahead. Dubinsky trying to thread the needle for Bowman. He nearly did. That just went off Gardena's stick. Yeah, now Bowman behind the goal. Pulls up there. Bowman had a real good chance in overtime last night. Now he tries to throw it in front here. And when you make that center ice pass, sometimes it deflects. He might be headed back. Odd man rush the other way. As it stands, RPI gets back. Full numbers there. And a shot stopped by Marshall. There's that shot, Gardena. He scored earlier on a shot like that. Thought he'd try his luck again. Marshall holding his ground. Absorbs the puck, no rebound, no second opportunity. Talking things over here, Rory Herman with Otto Ville Lampinen and Kyle Halbauer. It's the youngster, or the, I guess, uh, freshman Swankler. Centering a line here for Bowling Green with Parker. And on the far side, that's Burke. Burke walking his way in, all the way to the oh. net, and he scores! What a move! Wow. Nathan Burke ends the game here in overtime with a dazzling individual effort. <laughs> and Bowling Green takes a 3-2 in OT. I'm not sure if he even touched it at the end there. Is it flicked into the far post? Another look at the goal. Oh, that yeah. was incredible. He got it on his backhand to go five hole on Trevor Linden. Different Linden, that's Linden Marshall. Yes. Tre Trevor Linden was Trevor a, Lind that's was a, was a star. Me, Linda Marshall, <laughs> Trevor Linden. <laughs> Trevor Linden was a star <laughs> in the NHL. That's right, Vancouver Canucks. Canucks, yeah. We're, you, had, you had Western Canadian hockey on the mind with, with Nolan, I think. Yes, I, I think so. Anyway, Burke gets the goal. It's his second in as many games, and it's the game winner here in overtime as the Falcons take it 3-2. So really a disappointing end for RPI to this opening weekend, but you got to be happy there's hockey again. I think that's the most important thing. A lot of games left to play. And this is a, a good, solid Bowling Green team that came in here uh, this uh, this weekend. Yeah, I mean, uh, RPI played well. You know, they had some opportunities. Both teams have an opportunities. But uh, this is something that they can certainly build off of, no question. So the goal was Burke from Parker, Eric Parker, with the assist on the overtime winner here at the Houston Fieldhouse. And that'll do it for our, our second broadcast, which, which was better than the first, as far as, uh, I, as, far as, you, as I, you and I were concerned. The, of course, RPI fans would have preferred, I guess, the tie or the win. But like we said, there's many more hockey to be played. Peach is here next weekend. We'll have those games for you as well. For Dan Fridge and I'm Perry Lascaris and all of our RPI TV crew, we thank you for watching tonight's game. Once again, your final score from the Houston Fieldhouse. In overtime, it was Bowling Green State University 3 and RPI 2. This has been RPI Hockey on RPI TV and ESPN.